Today, I want to talk about something that I see over and over and over again. So much so that I've actually already made a video about this and I'm gonna make another. And that is about the narcissist's karma. When does the narcissist get their karma? How can we accelerate or facilitate the narcissist getting their karma? Let's talk about that in today's video. My name is Amy and this is Narcoway. My channel is devoted to educating, supporting, and encouraging victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse. If you've been to my channel before, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. So if you haven't already, and maybe you want to watch my existing video on the narcissist's karma, go ahead and I'm going to link to it right there. You can click on that and have a watch. Or maybe you just want to watch this one. I'm not going to say too much different <laughs> because really what it comes down to is a waiting game. You can't force karma on someone. That's the entire nature of karma itself. It comes in its own time to the people as they deserve it. There is such thing as good karma and bad karma. So the theory is if you're a good person, you have a good heart, you do good things, good things are going to come back to you. If you're a bad person, you have evil tendencies, you're hurtful or mean to other people, you're going to have that karma come back on you. So as our experiences with the narcissist tell us that the narcissist is a, is a bad person, they don't treat us with love or kindness or even human decency. There's certainly no respect in that relationship coming from a narcissist. They torture you. They mentally destroy you. They hurt you to this realm that you didn't even know existed until you felt the wrath of a narcissist. And for that, you're very angry, as was I. And that is perfectly and completely understandable. I know you're angry. I know that you're hurt. And I know you want to see the narcissist, the person who caused you that pain, pay the price for their actions. And that's totally understandable. That's completely reasonable. The thing is, you are not capable of doing that. You, it's not within your power. There's nothing you can do as the victim of a narcissist to get payback. I mean, there is in the respect that you live your life and you don't let the narcissist's previous behaviors dictate your life going forward. That is karma on the narcissist because the narcissist has such a need for control that when they stop controlling you, that hurts them. That bothers them. And that you can call it karma because you want to cause them pain. You want to cause them hurt. And that's really the only way you can do it. Now I know what you might be thinking. What if I trash his house? What if I key his car? What if I cause physical damage to something he loves? Well, you could do that. I would certainly not recommend it. I would certainly not do it because at the end of the day, that's really quite petty and you're not going to feel better at the end of the day. You might feel better in that moment while you're releasing that aggression and, and that rage. It's going to be very temporary, that good feeling. And then almost immediately, once you've completed that act, you will feel regret you'll feel sorrow and really that's a criminal act so you can't do that you can go to jail you can be charged you can be fined and then the narcissist is just going to use that against you and say haha look i said that person was crazy look what they did they trashed my belongings 
So let's rule that one right off the hop. As good as that would feel to physically release that aggression, find another way to do that. You know, I've heard they have these smash rooms available now, maybe when COVID is over, they'll open them back up and look in your city, you can go into a room and they have it set up for you to just smash and break things. That might help a little bit. How about just exercising and taking up a sport, maybe running, run at full speed or do some kind of physical activity, maybe a sport. That's going to help you release that energy. So we're going to rule that one out. I don't condone that in any way, shape or form. Don't get physical. Don't damage other people's property. You know, maybe you want to fantasize about it. There's no harm in that. But don't actually do it. You're not doing anyone any favors. Certainly not yourself. The second thing you might be thinking is, well, what if I notify the new supply? Yeah, that's an option. And you know what? I have heard some mixed stories on this. Some people have told the new supply what the narcissist is. They've exposed that person. And sometimes that has worked out. I mean, I, again, personally would not go this route. I don't think that the odds are in your favor for this working out. And the reason is because the new supply is being love bombed at this point by the narcissist. So you're going to come across as the bitter ex. And again, the narcissist will use this to their advantage saying, look at how crazy this person is. They just can't keep themselves out of my business. They're obsessed with me. They want to break us up because they want me back. It can be totally misconstrued into something it's not. And while you might have genuine concern for this new person and you might be trying to save them a world of heartbreak, it's really none of your business. It's none of your business. It's none of your concern. And it, again, it's going to just be a very temporary good feeling. It's going to feel good in that moment when you have the new supplies attention, when you're exposing the narcissist and you have that audience, that someone that's listening to what you're saying. But the chances of the, the new supply actually heeding your warning are really, really slim. The chances are they're just going to go report everything you've said right back to the narcissist. And, you know, again, the narcissist can use this against you in a criminal way. This could, you know, if they wanted to involve the authorities or the police, they could say you're stalking them or you're harassing them or their partner. So you just want to be very, very careful. I know that when you are angry and you feel that the whole situation is so unjust, which it is, that you just do things maybe without thinking. Maybe there's a little bit of a rational thought there where you're acting on impulse. But I implore you to wait it out. As hard as it is, please wait it out because you will feel better about yourself by not engaging with the narcissist or the new supply or the narcissist's friends or family, anybody, anybody that you have walked away from in that previous relationship who has not been there for you through this. Maybe they've sided with the narcissist and they've just ignored you and dropped you off the face of the earth where you were once friends. And, and you're hurt by that. You're not just angry, but you're hurt and you're confused. Well, you know that the narcissist is smearing your name. You know that they're trying to make you look bad. So, in that immediate time after the breakup or after you leave, these flying monkeys, as we call them, these people that surround the narcissist, they're going to believe the narcissist, especially if you're not out there saying, listen to my story. I have a story too. If you just step back, they only have one side of the story. They're going to listen to that and they're going to tend to believe that until time tells all which it will. 
the less that you engage with the narcissist, the new supply and the flying monkeys, the more the narcissist will just expose themselves. You don't need to do it. And you know what? That keeps your credibility completely intact. So when the flying monkeys or when the new supply reflect and they realize, oh, this person didn't smash up their car, didn't call everybody and try to get everyone to listen to their side of the story. They just stepped back and lived their life. They're going to be like, wow, like this person really was fed up. They were done. They walked away. And how strong were they to do that? And the truth will come out. That's the bottom line. Yes, it's going to take some time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's going to be months. It might be years. But you can do something else in the meantime. Instead of focusing and sitting there waiting for the narcissist's karma to come to them, live your life and build your own karma. Good karma. Do something that makes you feel good. You know, I already mentioned exercising. Start exercising. That has only good benefits for you. It's got physical benefits. It's got mental benefits. It gives you something to do to occupy your time. You know, when you're out there working really hard, your mind's not going to be going in circles and ruminating about the abuse. You're going to be focusing on your task at hand. So it's a distraction. It's going to make you feel good. You know, you might happen to get a little more fit from doing that. So you're going to gain some confidence that you've most definitely lost if you have spent any amount of time with a narcissist. So there's no downside to that. Once you move on and, and I'm not saying move on by dating again, because you have to wait until you're ready for that. Um, but just move on with your life. Don't sit around pining for the narcissist. Make new friends, start new hobbies. You know, it's kind of a tricky spot where we are in the world right now because of COVID, but this is temporary. This is, we're going to get over this hump and you know, you'll begin to be able to travel again and go out again and do all the things that you love, which you couldn't do when you were with the narcissist. Don't forget, they had so much power and control over you. Just that alone should give you a little satisfaction as far as karma or revenge goes. Knowing that that narcissist has no power over you and you can do whatever you want with whomever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want, you know that that was not possible when you were with the narcissist. And now it is. That alone should give you some satisfaction. The narcissist has no more control over you. That's karma because you've taken that away. That's what they desire most. They want that control. They want to be able to manipulate you. And by you trashing their house or calling up their friends, they are going to take satisfaction in that. That is still feeding them. That's just as good as calling them up and saying, hey, baby, come over. They look at that the same way because it's attention. And you know what? It's almost even sweeter for them because they know they've got the best of you. Because they're evil, because they're demented, they like to know that they've got you. And to see you react in anger, they like that. So that's exactly what you don't want to give them. By you being indifferent, completely uncaring, unfazed, unbothered by them and what they're doing, that's the karma. Moving on with your life. They have to now go out and find new supply. Find someone else to feed their ego. Doesn't matter, not your problem. You focus on you. And the sweetest part of this and the win at the end of this is that eventually with this time that passes while you're being so gracious and patient waiting for that karma, the reward is 
eventually you won't even care anymore. And that is karma. When you don't even think about them anymore, and when you don't even care about them anymore, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It doesn't get any sweeter than that because you have erased them successfully from your thought process and your thought patterns. Now, what's going to hurt a narcissist the most is for you to stop thinking about them. So believe it or not, it might not seem like it because it's not something tangible and it's not something you see right away, but leaving it alone, moving on with your life, stopping the focus from being on the abuser. That is sweet, sweet justice, my lovely warriors. That's where you want to be in life. And I speak from experience. I've been through all of this. I've been through that anger. I've had that rage where I just wanted to yell and scream and smash. But I held it together and I didn't do any of that. And the satisfaction I have now of knowing I never stooped to that level and I held my head high and I've had those flying monkeys call me, several of them, and I don't even take their calls because you know what? Like that was a personal decision that I made that they made a decision to side with somebody that I thought was a really, really bad person. And I was betrayed by several people and I have decided for my personal reasons not to have them back in my life. I forgive them and I don't hold animosity towards them, but I know I moved on with my life. I don't need them as friends. I made new friends. When they weren't, weren't there for me, why do I want them now? I went and made new friends. I created an entire new life for myself. And that is the sweetest justice. Now, three years ago, had I told myself all this, I might not have believed it. But that's why I'm telling you guys, because I really want you to believe it. I really want you to know it's true. And it is. I would not lie to you. I would not make this up. I promise you, be patient, focus on you, do the self-work recreate, refine that self-love that you've lost. And eventually you will not care what happens to the narcissist. Karma, revenge, you just won't care. And that is the sweetest justice. Okay, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did like it, please go ahead and click the like button. If you don't already subscribe, you can click subscribe now please do that and always you can follow me on instagram where i post daily okay guys until the next video i love you all